Hello, my friends. I'm Adam Wilkinson, CEO of Jade Bloom, and I imagine you're watching this video right now because you either participated in our interactive video from last week when we invited our users to vote on the content that they wanted us to cover this week on the toxicity of essential oils, or perhaps you just saw the title of this YouTube video and you were curious about what I had to say on this controversial topic of ingesting essential oils. If it's the latter, it's possible that you've already picked a side to this debate on ingesting essential oils, and you're just getting ready to change the channel if I say something that you don't agree with. Am I right? What is this, an old boob tube? Nobody does this anymore. But what's he gonna say? If he makes me feel guilty for ingesting my essential oils every day, then screw you, I'm gone. See ya. Is that not it? Or is it something like this? If I hear even a hint of disagreement to what Robert Tisserand says about ingesting essential oils, he can just take his little YouTube mini-series and shove it where the sun don't shine. Shoved it up his anal cavity. Or perhaps you just don't give a shit about essential oils and you're wondering why YouTube even suggested this video to you in the first place until you just heard me say the word shit and controversial topic and now maybe I'll stick around. This is getting good. Okay, I'm trying to have a little fun here before we dive into this heavy topic, but make no mistake, my friends, I want you to be healthy, and safe. Our discussion will include the best peer-reviewed scientific studies and research currently available on the topic. So here we go. Whoa, back it up. Okay, normally I save my personal opinions on these type of videos until the end of the video, but if that's what you're here for, let me save you some time. So because essential oils can be toxic, because people have been hurt from ingesting essential oils, and because of the complexity surrounding the questions you should ask before making the decision to ingest essential oils, I'm gonna personally recommend that you don't ingest. However, there is a case for ingestion, and we will make that here. Now, if you're willing to educate yourself and you're willing to ask the right questions each time before you make the decision to ingest, you should know science supports additional health benefits as the liver metabolizes the oils. But before we do that, you need to understand some of the potential dangers of ingesting essential oils by looking at some of the documented injuries. So here's a quick summary of how we're gonna tackle this topic together. One, we're gonna take a look at the documented dangers and even injuries of ingesting essential oils. Two, which oils have no business getting near my mouth. Three, the case for ingestion. Four, when you might want to ingest. Five, the questions you should ask every time before ingesting. And six, the do's and the don'ts. On poison.org, clinical toxicologist Roseanne Gould says this. Many people think essential oils are harmless because they are natural and have been used for a long time. In some cases, that is simply not true. Many essential oils can cause rashes if used on the skin. Many can be poisonous if absorbed through the skin or swallowed. Few have been tested like medicines have, even though people put them in their mouths, on their skin, and in their children's vaporizers. Aspirating an essential oil can cause pneumonia. This can happen if someone tries to swallow it, but chokes on it instead and a little goes into their lungs. Another great resource to learn about the potential dangers of essential oils is the website aromatherapyunited.org. Each year, Aromatherapy United compiles a list of all of the filed reports and gives a summary of those. If you yourself have been injured from using an essential oil, I suggest you file your report with them. The information can help others, help educate, help us understand what to do, what not to do, what's safe, what's not safe. I have here the most recent year from Aromatherapy United showing the following reported injuries. 60 confirmed injuries, 76 reported injuries via a specific application of essential oils, 44 topically, 11 inhaled, 17 through ingestion via a beverage, and four through oral ingestion via a capsule. Let's take a look at the first three injury reports from ingesting essential oils. Now, these are in no particular order. These are simply the first three that they reported from their most recent filing. The first ingestion injury is from a female age 42 from ingesting, accidentally, she claims, Plant Therapy's Derma Shield Blend. She says, I accidentally ingested this blend of oil. Some dropped onto the skin of my thumb. I use lotion to dilute it. 
Not long afterwards, I used my hand to eat something. The oil got onto my food and then on my lips in my mouth when I ate. My mouths and lips started burning. About an hour later, my stomach started hurting and feeling sick. I felt sick for over 12 hours. The second report is from a female age 36. She claims intentional oral ingestion as instructed of doTERRA's on guard, slim and sassy, lemon, wild orange, and detox protocol. I diluted three drops in eight ounces of water two to three times per day for six weeks. Initially, I had no side effects. Within two weeks, I developed a sore throat, and over the next four weeks, I developed reflux, an uncomfortable ache in the stomach and under the breastbone, and diarrhea. I underwent colonoscopy and endoscopy in January 2016, approximately two months after stopping ingestion. Side effects were continuing. Results indicated that the lining of my esophagus and stomach had been eaten away. Undergoing continuing appointments with the gastroenterologist to monitor and facing an upcoming endoscopy to determine if the lining is is improving or repairing. Okay, and here we have the third report from a female age 39 claiming oral ingestion of the doTERRA on guard blend. I put three drops of the blend then filled the remaining empty veggie cap with fractionated coconut oil and swallowed with water. Three times on separate days within a two-week period. The first time I felt numbness in my tongue but just thought it odd. The second time my tongue and lips went numb. The third time my throat closed and I required an EpiPen shot. It was later determined by the ER doctor that I had an allergic reaction to the oil and most possibly the clove oil in the blend. Yes, it got progressively worse each time. I believe the times my reaction was more severe, the veggie cap either leaked before getting to my stomach or the doc wondered if I had built up a larger reaction from taking it multiple times. Now let me be clear about something. This video is in no way intended to discuss the quality of any particular company's products. In fact, as the CEO of Jade Bloom, it is my personal opinion that our competitors, both doTERRA and plant therapy that just happened to show up in these first three injury reports do care about the safety of their customers and the quality of their products. I've used products from both of those companies and I have nothing negative to say about either one of them. However, there really is some dangerous information on essential oil usage being perpetuated within some organizations and we hope that this video will help dispel some of that misinformation. And even though our company, Jade Bloom, is not listed in the injury report, I suspect that we have had customers following bad advice and using our products unsafely. It is our hope, again, that this video will help educate all oil users despite brand-specific preferences and keep us safe. I'll include a link in the description below to the PDF document discussing the injury reports that we've mentioned in this video. You're welcome to click on it and read through the most recent report or access previous reports from Aromatherapy United. One of the most recognized names when it comes to educating on the safe uses of essential oils is Robert Tisserand. Do I have any Robert Tisserand fans in the house? I am. He was asked recently in an interview the following question. Have you seen any cases where there have been detrimental effects from ingestion of essential oils? Here's how he responded. The most common adverse effects from ingestion is simply stomach irritation. If you put essential oil in water and drink the water, then there are two reasons this is not a good idea. One is that the essential oils don't dissolve in water, and so it actually makes it harder for your body to assimilate the essential oil into its system because it's not evenly dispersed. It makes it much harder for the body, but it also means that you have little droplets of essential oil floating around in your stomach, and this can lead to irritation of the very sensitive mucous membranes in the stomach. Okay, at the start of this video, I promised you a list of essential oils that have no business going near your mouth. You should never ingest any of these oils because of the additional risk associated with these oils. Most of them have a chemical constituent that come with additional risks from ingestion. That's not to say that there isn't a place in aromatherapy for these oils, but to err on the side of caution, you should never ingest any of the oils on this list. Here you go. Ajawan, almond bitter, arborvitae, arnica, sweet birch, boldo leaf, Spanish broom, calamus, camphor, cedarwood, cypress, deer tongue, eucalyptus, garlic, horseradish, jabberandi, lemongrass, melilotus, mugwort, mustard, nightshade, nutmeg, pennyroyal, rue, sassafras, savin, southernwood, stinging nettles, tansy, thuja, white fir, wintergreen, wormseed, and wormwood. The effects of many natural chemical constituents that exist in exotic plants are still being studied, so please don't assume that this is always a complete list of essential oils you should never ingest. Now on this YouTube mini-series on the toxicity of essential oils, we have separate lists of oils that should be avoided by pregnant women and by children. So please subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss those videos once we release them. Are you ready to make the case for ingestion? 
Here we go. I often see Robert Tisserin often misquoted or even misinterpreted when it comes to ingesting essential oils. This is a quote from him. He said, and by the way, I have never said you should not ingest essential oils. You may think you have heard me say that today. I have not said people should not ingest essential oils. I don't believe it's an absolute no-no. What I do believe is that you need to know what you're doing. You need to know why you're doing it, what dose you are taking, how long you are going to be taking that dose. What is the reason? If you're talking about small amounts as you would use in food flavors, if we're talking about one or two drops a day, that's fine. That is okay. But if you're taking a therapeutic dose of essential oils, if you're taking 10 drops or 20 drops a day, just because somebody told you it was a good idea, it is not a good idea. Here we have a quote from one of the world's leading experts on the safe usage of essential oils as far back as, you know, the 1970s when he published his first book. He's recognizing that there are medicinal benefits and reasons why people might want to ingest essential oils. Tisserin published and republished his book, Essential Oil Safety, which draws on the knowledge from over 15,000 research papers on essential oil safety. Another reputable source for essential oil safety information is the National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy, also known as the NAHA. They recognize on their website that in Ingestion is a viable method of application of essential oils. This is what it states. Essential oils may be applied to the skin, inhaled, diffused, or taken internally. Each of these methods have safety issues which need to be considered. Now, most people don't know this, but the Food and Drug Administration has done extensive testing on essential oils from a food safety standpoint. They've published their research under CFR 21, Volume 3. So let's talk about why we should care about the FDA list. It's known as the GRAS list. G-R-A-S. Generally recognized as safe. Now currently there's actually over 160 different essential oils on that list. If you are making the decision personally to ingest essential oils, you should check that list and make sure it's listed there. Let's look at one more quote from Robert Tisserin regarding ingestion in an interview he got this question. So your recommendation would be for individuals to treat an essential oil as far as ingestion is concerned more like a pharmaceutical? He responded, yes. The way I'm looking at it is if you're sick, you take medicine and then you get well and then you stop. So let's summarize what we've just learned here. We have the world leading expert on essential oil safety saying that there is a place for ingestion medicinally. We have the National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy stating that ingestion is a valid form of application of essential oils. And we have the FDA with extensive testing of essential oils for food safety with their generally recognized as safe list. Then why in the hell do I keep hearing and seeing the essential oil evangelist screaming, never ingest essential oils? Okay, to be fair, perhaps that advice is given in the same spirit that I started this video, and that was to never ingest essential oils, or to err on the side of caution and just don't ingest. However, in this video, we are empowering you with the knowledge you need to keep you and your family safe while ingesting. I can already hear the never ingest essential oil evangelist saying, okay, maybe you can ingest safely, but why would you if the best benefits of essential oils are derived through inhalation or topically? Okay, I do mostly agree with that statement. However, there are plenty of scientific studies that we're gonna look at where the best benefits of essential oils actually come through ingestion and not topical use or inhalation. I know, I know. And I'm sorry to understand how ingestion might provide additional healing benefits over inhalation or topical use. We just gotta geek out on the chemistry of what happens to an essential oil that's been ingested. I know, I've been avoiding it, you've been avoiding it. You gotta understand it to some degree to move on. So you remember our do not ingest oil list. The reason that those oils are on that list is because there's a particular chemical constituent in those oils that cannot be metabolized by the liver. Or when metabolized, actually produce toxic byproducts that are then excreted by the kidneys. Some metabolites, the word we're gonna use to refer to those byproducts of an essential oil that passes through the liver, some metabolites actually provide additional healing benefit that don't exist in the essential oil by itself. You still with me? We good? Let's keep going. So the, the good essential oil metabolites are currently a hot topic of research and their own biological activity and how they interact with our organs. Let me give you an example of active research going on with this phenomenon. D-limonene is the main chemical constituent in many citrus essential oils, but when metabolized by the liver, it actually produces perylic acid, which has promising research in cancer prevention when present in the human body. In fact, it is currently given orally to cancer patients because of its anti tumor properties. That might not be particularly a useful example of ingestion for you, but it does 
do a great job at illustrating what happens to larger doses of essential oil that reach the liver from ingestion versus oil that's been applied topically, attempts to pass through the dermis into the bloodstream but gets absorbed by fat cells. So let's move on and look at another example that has extensive research for ingestion. Peppermint essential oil was used in 16 different clinical trials for children that had IBS also known as irritable bowel syndrome. Nine of those 16 studies were randomized, double-blind, crossover studies. So what exactly does that mean? I don't know, but it sounds really thorough. So after 651 kids ingested peppermint essential oil with eight placebo groups, it was determined that peppermint essential oil is a statistically significant effective treatment for IBS. While the specific mechanism of how this works to treat IBS is still not conclusive, scientists suspect that it's the menthol in the peppermint essential oil that actually dulls the pain receptors in the colon, causing the muscles to relax. Well. If I bored you with the science, I apologize, but thank you and congratulations for sticking with me. Let's keep going. Okay, so I'm not going to get into the details, the scientific details of these next three studies, but I will just give you the overview. And if you're interested in the science, you can read the links below. Citrus oils to treat gastric disorders, lavender essential oil for neurologic disorders, sleep and anxiety, and turmeric for arthritis. We've come a long ways, and now we're going to ask the question. Should you, should you, should you, should you, should you ingest essential oils? Yes, no. Unfortunately, the science doesn't give us the liberty to say yes or no, but hmm, we can say maybe, sometimes. However, if you wanna err on the side of caution, just say no. On the other hand, now that you are informed and you want to explore some of the additional health benefits that science suggests might be available from ingesting essential oils, you're welcome to do so, but you must ask these four questions first, every time. Who is ingesting the essential oil? Is it a healthy adult? Is it a pregnant woman? Is it a medicated person? Is it a child? Different groups of people are gonna respond differently to the same essential oil. Two, what is the quality of the essential oil you are ingesting? Is it 100% pure? Has it been GCMS tested? Have you seen the lab report? Are you sure it's not a fake oil? There's a lot of crap on the market advertised as 100% pure that is not in fact essential oil. How ironic would that be? You're consuming essential oils for the health benefits, but you're actually consuming a synthetic product or a fake product or a chemical that is actually dangerous to your body. Be careful. Three, which essential oil are you ingesting and for what reason? Is that oil on the do not ingest list? Is that oil on the FDA Gras list? Why are you ingesting that oil? Would it be better to topically use the oil or inhale the oil? Number four, how much are you ingesting? Now, if you do decide to ingest essential oils after following these safety guidelines, it's important that you understand that there is no additional health benefit by ever consuming more than a few drops at one time. Here's some additional tips for ingesting essential oils, the do's and the don'ts. Number one, do place your essential oil in a safe dilution medium prior to ingestion, such as a carrier oil, honey, or a capsule. Number two, do make sure the oil or blend of oils you are ingesting does not contain a known toxic oil. Number three, do ask the four questions in this video before making the decision for you or for someone else to ingest essential oils. Number four, do know which specific ailment you are addressing with ingestion and stop ingesting afterwards. Number five, do make sure the oil you ingest is 100% pure. Let's take a look at our list of do nots. One, do not add essential oil to water and drink it. Number two, do not assume that if you safely ingested essential oils against safe guidelines in the past, that it guarantees you will not get injured in the future. Number three, do not ever ingest more than a few drops at one time. Number four, do not ingest an essential oil that has not been tested by a third party lab to which you have the results demonstrating its purity. Number five, do not ingest a known toxic essential oil. Number six, do not ingest essential oils if you are taking any medications and haven't consulted your medical practitioner that provided you the prescription. Number seven, do not pressure someone else to ingest essential oils beyond their comfort level. Most benefits of essential oils can be derived from inhalation or topical applications. Is this helpful, you guys? Can we end the controversy now on this topic? And maybe now you're asking, but what do you do, Adam? What do you choose to do for you and your family? Do you ingest essential oils? To which I answer, mind your own damn business. No, I'm just kidding. You know, personally, there are a few essential oils that I ingest from time to time. Uh, one of those is proprietary blend 
of essential oils, we call it allergies, it is cashmere, lavender, peppermint, and lemon. And if I feel something coming on, even a sickness or allergies, um, I, I will consume this from time to time. I do also ingest some citrus oils. And what do I do for my family? Well, let me tell you a story. Just a couple of days ago, my daughter Allison, 14 years old, she woke up and was complaining about an upset stomach. She was debating whether or not she wanted to go to school and I asked her if she wanted some of our gastrointestinal blend, we call it Digest. I asked her if she wanted me to rub a little bit of this on her stomach, which I've done in the past and it's been helpful. And her response kind of surprised me. She said, you know, Dad, I." just don't want to smell like essential oil all day at school. So I said, okay, that's fair. How about we put a couple of drops in a tablespoon of honey? Would you like that? And she agreed. So she took that, I took her to school. 15 minutes later, I sent her a text. Allison, how are you feeling? She responded back simply, great and thanks. I love natural healing and we have those types of experiences pretty often in our family as we turn to our natural medicine cabinet. A couple of weeks ago I shared a video about our family trip that we took over Christmas holiday and we had a couple of kids, young kids, with some earaches and we were able to stop that pain in its tracks within a few minutes by applying essential oil topically. That's it you guys. You made it. You did it. You made it all the way through. Hopefully you learned something along the way but either way give yourself a pat on the back because that's fantastic. This is part one of our eight-part series on the toxicity of essential oils. Join us next week. Again, we're going to shoot for weekly releases here in this series. Join us on the topic, again, you guys voted for this, about how much is too much. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And you can hit that little bell so that you get notified when we release the next video. And now I want to have some fun here. I haven't ever done this. I don't promise that we'll do this every time. But I think this information is very important. And I think it's important that we help share it with the essential oil community. We want to keep you safe. We want you to keep your family safe. So if you've had any experience with ingestion, whether it's been not to ingest or you've had injury from ingestion or you've had a success story with ingestion, share it in the comments below and I promise to give away this luxury bottle of Jade Bloom's Pink Lotus to one commenter. I think we normally sell it for $70 on our website, but you might get it for free. Uh, let us hear from you. Share your comments and in one week from the time I post this video, I'll pick a winner. We'll post the winner uh, in the comments and I'll reach out to you and make sure that we ship this to you for free. Until next time, so long.